Greetings guys, girls, non-binary pals and welcome back to another video. Now you might be sitting at home wondering why are there two naked plushies behind you? Well, dear viewer, uh, Generet and Liebert are currently naked because they had a long-awaited bath yesterday and they cannot bathe while they are clothed. So they're here, they're damp, and they're bringing their energy to the video today. You're welcome. Anyway, what I am doing today is something that I haven't done before and I like can't believe I've been doing this for almost three years and have never done this before. And that is watching a Ben Shapiro video. Yeah, I know. I've never watched a Ben Shapiro video on this channel before, which is so shocking because I've watched everything else. I've, I've talked about everyone. I've done everything, but not Ben Shapiro. Now, the reason that I couldn't believe that is that I have dedicated hours upon hours of my time watching his videos. I have seen most of the videos he has uploaded. And for what? For nothing, because I've never even talked about one, because every time I start, I get distracted by like Michael Knowles or Matt Walsh or someone else. Um, so I've never actually made a video about him. So... Today we are rectifying that. You're so welcome. <laughs> and before we get into it, I wanna say thank you to today's patron of the day, Artemis. They also prompted me to make a Ben Shapiro video. So thank you for prompting me. Um, I've been meaning to do this for literally years. And so we're finally gonna do it. Uh, I appreciate you and your input. And if anyone else would like to become a patron and you know, recommend some video ideas and such, then you can go to patreon.com slash savvycat. It starts at as little as one pound a month. I appreciate it, so cool. The video we are specifically going to be watching today is called Apple Joins Woke Streaming Wars. And it's one of his like segments where he covers like a bunch of topics. He like baits you in with something that he talks about for three seconds. And then he goes on to talk about other stuff that no one asked for. But this one caught my eye because he's talking about the show Frog and Toad, um, which is a kid's show. And obviously he thinks it's going woke um, and he has something to say about it. And then he has something to say about a lot of other silly things. So let's get into that. There is a, a series called Frog and Toad by writer and illustrator Arnold LaBelle. Frog and Toad are friends, Frog and Toad together. These are, these are children's books. For the children! Apparently Apple TV is now making a series on Frog and Toad and they will continue to make them sort of gay, is the idea. This falls into the gay subculture Bert and Ernie are stupping. Any two characters of the same sex who live in close proximity to one another in children's cartoons end up being picked up by gay subculture and then treated as though they are actually a gay couple who are jackhammering in the back room. <laughs> I will never understand this sort of take because it's like, they're not gay. They're animals, obviously. Why does it matter? I'm like, okay, but would you say they were straight though? Would you have a problem with that? They're like, every time there are two members of the same sex in a kid's TV show that live together in close proximity, then suddenly they're gay. It's like, well, you would say the same if it was people of opposite genders. If it was a man and a woman living in close proximity, like sharing a room, I guarantee you would be saying that they were together. That would be, you know, it would probably be explicitly stated because that's not a controversial thing to say on kids' television. So, and would you have a problem with it? Probably not. And like, you're the one adding sexual context here. You're like, yeah, they're saying that they're gay and they're going into the back room and jackhammering it. It's like, no one's saying they're having sex. No one's implying, no one's putting sex in this. You're putting sex in this. You can be like gay and asexual. No one's adding any sexual context to this. You are doing that. They're just saying they're gay. They're in a relationship. I, I think that they are a couple. No one's taking it any further than that. No one is imagining their sex life. No one is sexualizing them. Kids aren't. When kids see heterosexual couples on TV, they're not imagining them in a sexual way. They don't know what that is. They don't know what that means. They're just like, oh, they love each other. Like kids aren't putting sexual context in there, regardless of whether it's gay or straight, you're putting sexual connotation on there. That's you doing that. And you don't do it when they're straight couples. So why are you doing it when they're gay couples? It's real weird. Right, that's, that, that is the way that this works in our popular culture. And it's really quite silly and quite foolish. The politicization of children's TV, the attempt to sexualize children's characters is really screwed up. Being gay isn't political and no one's talking about sex except you, so. It is a form of changing the minds of small children. That is the goal. It is ideological grooming. 
Not like they want to have sex with kids. Like they want those kids to believe the same things that they believe about the world and sexual orientation and sexual identity and all the rest of that kind of stuff. And so anytime they can insert that in children's programming, they wish to do so. You mean what you've been doing forever? Being like straight couple, straight couple, straight couple, straight people, straight people, straight people. That's you. That's you showing all the kids and everyone your political ideology that straight people exist and gay people don't. Everyone is straight. If you're anything but straight, you're abnormal. Everyone is allowed to be in love and you're allowed to kiss on kids television and you're allowed to be in your straight relationship and talk about love and relationship and all that. You're allowed to do that. That's totally fine. That's not political. That's not a statement. That's not some sexuality ideology being forced on children. That's just normal life. But you make them two people of the same gender and do the exact same thing. If you had a kid's TV show exactly the same and you switch out one of the people in one of the relationships, suddenly it's bad. Why? Why is it bad? Is it because you're forcing your ideology on me and you don't want me to stop that? Like, you're the one doing the thing that's bad here. You're the one being like, you have to be straight. You have to be straight. Gay people don't exist. Gay people don't exist. You want to talk about like political ideology and like mental grooming? That's what you're doing. You don't want kids to know that other people exist. That That's... That's the problem here. This is the exact reason why we here at Daily Wear are going to spend $100 million on children's content over the course of the next couple of years. How much? I didn't realize the Daily Wire had that much fucking bank. Oh my God. $100 million on children's programming from the Daily Wire? That is a horrifying thought, actually. Why do you have... Who, where? <laughs> I have thoughts and concerns. And also where the fuck is a hundred million dollars coming? What do, What else do they do? I don't, do I not know what the Daily Wire do? How do they have a hundred million dollars? And why? I don't, yeah, okay, moving on from that. Terrifying. Yep. The fact that um, the Daily Beast is now reporting the that they're going to keep the gay subtext is uh, pretty astonishing. The, the title, again, from the Daily Beast is Frog and Toad are still gay in Apple's new kids show if you want them to be. Isn't that wonderful? Because again, imperative that children's TV be made more gay. So true. Children's TV does need to be more gay for reasons we have already discussed of uh, gay people exist. Also very important, apparently, that James Bond be made into a black woman. Who says 007 has to be white, British, and male? Oh, you mean aside from the author? of the entire James Bond series. Again, it only works in one direction. Nobody's ever like, what if we made Shaft a white female? Nobody ever does that because it's stupid. I mean, I feel like this is a conversation we've been having for a long time where a lot of women are like, we don't want a female James Bond. We want a woman who is her own character who does the same shit as James Bond and isn't just like making James Bond a woman. We want strong women characters on their own. Like this is a conversation we've been having for a long time. They're trying to fill some diversity quota without having to make a whole new character because they don't want to do that. So like no one's really asking for it. There's a whole conversation on both sides of this. It's not something really anyone particularly wants. Not for the reason that a woman couldn't be James Bond, but more for the fact that like, we don't need that. I want like a woman who has her own identity and her own movie without having to like ride on the back of a man's character that's already been written. It doesn't work the other way around. And I can't believe we have to keep having this fucking conversation because it's a like white male dominated industry. If you get rid of people who are of the minority, you are just aiding in the problem. You are taking away the little diversity that we have. You can't switch it out that way because that's erasing people. We don't need more white men anywhere. There's enough of them. There's enough, there's enough of you. There's enough of you. It doesn't matter if a few of you get switched out. You switch out like people of color, you've lost a lot of diversity, especially since a lot of the time in a lot of movies, not all, but in a lot of movies, uh, culture plays like a part in it, right? And like, you can't have people of other cultures playing those roles because it doesn't work. It doesn't fit the cultural significance of the story. Whereas in a lot of movies that star like white people, it could be anyone. It's got nothing to do with any culture or tradition or anything like that. None of that comes into play. Like you can't switch like a 
white person into a movie where a main theme is about like overcoming hardships of like racism. You know, like you can't, <laughs> there's reasons why you can't switch them out. Now again, I have no problem with the idea of a black male bond. The real distinction between, would be between male and female because it turns out that men and women are wildly different. The idea of a woman who is able to bed down with good looking men, that's just called a woman. The whole point of James Bond is that James Bond is a man who is able to get beautiful women, which is a male fantasy. And again, a whole different set of obstacles in doing that if you're a man than if you're a woman. Is that the whole point of James Bond? Forgive me, I, I think I've only ever watched like one James Bond movie and I found it ridiculously boring. Is that the whole point of James Bond? Is that what it is? Is it purely the entire series is just male fantasy of a man being able to sleep with beautiful women? Is that literally the point of the series? Cause that sounds like, those just sound like bad movies. James Bond exists as a male fantasy to just like want to hook up with women and like, that's it. That's the entire base of the entire series. Ben Shapiro, that doesn't sound very aligned with your morals, does it? Is that what you do? You sit and fantasize about being able to hook up with a bunch of women? I thought you were against that. Are you saying that that's your fantasy, sir? You're confusing me now. What, what, where do you stand in this? I thought, I thought you were a, like, see a woman, fall in love with a woman, marry a woman, bed a woman, stay together until I die kind of dude. And now you're telling me that you fantasize about being able to hook up with a bunch of beautiful women? What? I thought that was bad. I thought that was bad. Why, why do you think that's good now? And like, being like, being able to hook up with a bunch of men, that's just called being a woman. No, it's... No, it's not though. It's so strange and bizarre how men seem to think that every woman can sleep with any dude. Like that's not happening. I can tell based on, you know, all of your videos that there is a very, very large number of women that you claim anyway, that you would never have, like you would never sleep with. You would never have anything to do with. And now you're saying that any woman could sleep with any man? Does that mean any woman could sleep with you? I, I didn't think so. So like, what are you what are you talking about? You would reject of so many women and so would a lot of men, unless they wouldn't. And unless everything you say is based on a fucking lie and nothing makes any sense and you're a hypocrite. Oh uh, yeah, probably that one actually. It's probably that one. It's probably that you're a massive fucking hypocrite. I am two minutes into this video. I've been here for 20 minutes. I've watched two minutes. I need to shut up. If the bond of our imagination is really just a series of gestures, the martinis, the gunfights, the sex, it opens up a much wider array of possibilities. What if Bond were black? What if Bond were a woman? Would that change anything about the essential bondness of Bond? If not, what are we... Yes, it would, of course, because men and women are different. What would it change? Be specific. Be, be specific about what it would change. Because, yeah, if it's about, like, guns and violence and sex and all that sort of stuff. Why can't it be a woman? Men and women are different. Yeah, I mean, yes, but also like not really. <laughs> yes, men and women are different, but just in general, people are different. So be specific. And it, not just that any woman could sleep with any man because either that's not true or you're a hypocrite. He then goes on to talk about the Met Gala for like the last 10 minutes of the video. And I like just don't really feel like talking about the Met Gala. So I'm going to move on to a different video, which he only just uploaded, which I am choosing to talk about because it is bluey. It has bluey in the thumbnail. It's titled, is this kids TV show being canceled? And I am a bluey enjoyer. I am a bluey lover. I have watched all of bluey multiple times. It is like go-to comfort show when I'm hungover. I spend the entire day literally not moving from my couch and just watching Bluey all day. Like it is just ultimate comfort. And I I didn't know anything was happening with Bluey. Um, so I want to know. <laughs> so we're going to see why Bluey is being canceled. Bluey is apparently in trouble. Why? Well, because it's the center of a, of a row, according to Deadline Hollywood after ABC and BBC Studios edited an episode to address concerns about fat shaming. Here is what it looked like. A oh, man. What? <laughs> Bluey. Why did you say, ah, oh, man? Uh, I just need to do some exercise. Tell me about it. Hmm. <sighs> oh, he <laughs> found you. Why don't you just do some exercise? Same old reason, Bluey. You kids and work. Okay, so apparently that right there is terrible. That's terrible. No man has ever looked at his weight on the scale and thought, man, I need to do some exercise. No one is saying that no man has ever done that. That's literally the point. He did it in the show because a lot of people do it. And that's why it's a problem. 
It's because a lot of people do it and it is normalized for people to do it. And it is normal to complain about the way your body looks and your weight in front of your children. That is the problem. That is a problem. And I'm sure he's about to elaborate on that a bit more. So I'll save what I want to say until he says stuff. But I will say like, good job on Bluey for reflecting on that, taking the feedback and then removing it from the episode after realizing that it is harmful and why, which we'll talk about in a moment. And it's bad if you tell men to do exercise if they are paunchy. Well, yeah, you shouldn't tell someone to exercise just because they have like a little bit of extra fat. Like you, you, there's no need to do that. That's not why you should exercise. That's the point is you should exercise to be healthy. You should exercise because it is good for you and because it's good for your body and it's good for your mind and it just makes you, you know, like a healthier person. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the way you look or like your body size, your body shape. That's not why you should exercise. That's why it's a problem. Encouraging children to exercise because of the way you look is bad. Encouraging children to exercise because it is good for you and it helps you live like a longer life. And it's just like, you know, better for your mental health and your health in general. And it just makes you feel like a better, healthier person. Good, kids need to exercise, tell them that. You should never say that the reason to exercise is because of how you look. That is bad. ABC said, quote, the recent episode of Bluey Exercise has been republished by ABC. The new version provides families with the opportunity to manage important conversations in their own way. I'm sorry, that, that is maybe the least offensive thing I've ever seen on a children's show. Is a dad going to the sca- This is pretty much me every morning with my kids, by the way. Well, then you're doing a bad thing. And I'm not surprised you're doing a bad thing in front of your kids and setting a bad example, but that you're doing a bad thing. It's like, I get on the scale, I'm like, God, daddy's a fatso. Daddy needs to go exercise. Like, what is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? There are so many things wrong with that. Oh my, uh, oh my God. It is, your kids will copy what you say and what you do, right? You are setting an example for your kids. The way you talk about yourself is the way that your kids will talk about themselves. And I know that you don't care. I know that you don't give a single fuck. <laughs> But when you grow up hearing your parents whom you idolize and whom you view as the like most perfect people in the world, talking down upon themselves and saying bad things about themselves, you will start to learn to say that about yourself too. Yeah, I grew up in a house with a parent who had a lot of self-confidence issues and in front of me would be talk about like weight loss and plastic surgery and all of this and that had a very negative impact on me. You know, when you grow up seeing someone that you view as like this most beautiful, perfect person being like, I need to change myself. I need to change myself. I need to change it myself. All you can do is then internalize that and put that on yourself and be like, I need to change myself. I need to change myself. And having someone constantly step on the scales and call themselves fat in like a derogatory, bad, negative way means that you also start saying that to yourself. Yeah, it leads to eating disorders. It leads to bad self-confidence. It leads to a lot of insecurities because you pick up on the way your parents talk about themselves and you put that onto yourself. I struggle with so many things because of the environment that I grew up in and how people talked about their bodies around me. I have an eating disorder. I have this like really massive thing that I have to fight in my head about like fucking aging and the way that my skin looks because I know that it's so ridiculous and it doesn't fucking matter. But I grew up my whole life being told that it does. And having to fight against that and try to overcome that is so hard. It's so difficult because these are not important things. You shouldn't be living your life trying to look a specific way. You should be living your life trying to be the best healthiest, happiest version of yourself. And that shouldn't be decided based upon how you look. Teach the children they can be a member of the opposite sex, yes. Teach kids that sometimes daddy and mommy need to lose a little weight, very bad, too judgmental, terrible. No one is teaching kids to be a member of the opposite sex. People are just saying that trans people exist. You don't understand anything. Like <laughs> You don't get it, you don't understand. <laughs> ah! Teach, teach kids to make good and healthy decisions. And that is not being restrictive. And that is also not overindulging. And it is not doing exercise to look a specific way. It is eating to feel good and exercising to feel good. 
That's it. It's about being healthy and happy. It's not about how you look. And no one is teaching children to change their gender. It's just saying that trans people exist. <laughs> It's just saying, if you want to wear this, you can. If you want to use this word to identify instead of this one, you can. Like, it's not a big deal. It's not harmful. What's harmful is telling your children they have to, like, fit into a box and change themselves to fit a specific set of rules laid out by society, whether that be a gender binary or a specific body type. Teaching them they have to fit into a box is bad. Okay, well, speaking of a terrible parenting, Story from page six today. Natural selection mechanism never accounted for the idea that there would be a group of people who apparently are, uh, are involved in a genetic bottleneck so that all of their children are queer. All of them. Might that have something to do with the parenting, with the environment in which the kids grew up? And when you have an outside social contagion that is defining people's gender identity and sexuality in new and shocking ways, in huge percentages, if everybody, if anybody ever acknowledged that, then they might have to come to grips with the fact that the social pool in which we all swim has an impact on kids. I think that a lot of people don't seem to understand that like the social contagion is creating queerness is like, that's not what it is. A lot of these conservatives are like, everyone is queer now. All of these kids can't be queer because they weren't like that before. It used to all be straight and very few people were queer. So it must be about the parenting. It must be about everyone wanting to be different and everyone wants to be gay now. It's like, you are missing the memo here. You are missing the point, <laughs> which is that, have you considered that maybe heterosexuality, hetero romanticism, that is what has been the social contagion because that's what has been seen as necessary and normal and what's been so heavily enforced uh, and inflicted like upon everyone. You had to be straight because it's illegal to be anything else and it has been for a really, really long time. And now we're at a place where, you know, it's talked about, it is normal. People are not afraid to be themselves and we are trying more to break away from gender binaries and break boundaries. And so people aren't afraid to open up that part of themselves. People have just stopped caring so much. I think that like, it's not the thing of everyone's a little bit gay. It's more just that people are willing to like, accept and admit that, you know, there'd be an exception. They're willing to accept and admit that, you know, maybe that gender doesn't play as massive of a role in who they're attracted to as most people would like to believe. And a lot of people have just shut off that part of themselves and have never allowed themselves to think about it because they haven't needed to. Like, that's the social contagion, that's the parenting style, then sure. If you just stopped and thought about the fact that maybe the social contagion was heteronormativity, then maybe you would realize the problem. Why is why is the problem that like being queer is the social contagion when being queer is now removing boxes that have been put there? Before everyone was told you have to be this or else there are severe consequences. No one is going to look outside of that box. No one is going to indulge in that part of themselves or explore it any further because why would they? It's ultimately going to hurt them. We live in a society now where we are trying to break down boundaries and we are trying to allow ourselves to, you know, expand on who we are and live freer, more happy lives. And so breaking down those boundaries, more people are going to be open to those parts of themselves and are more open to exploring those parts of themselves because they feel more safe to do so. Queerness is a spectrum uh, and like you can fall anywhere on it. And people are just like not closed off to the idea of being queer. And that's like not new, <laughs> but it is like the first time people have felt safe enough to exist like that. So yes, more and more families are going to have all of their kids being queer because it, it is it, it is how we are being socialized in a sense, um, but it's not being taught. It's just not not being taught, you know? It's not kids being taught to be gay, it's kids being told they don't have to be straight. You get it? Kids are no longer being taught you have to be heterosexual, you have to be straight, you have to be straight. You take away that, and then kids are more likely to explore themselves and figure out their sexualities outside of the binary and the boundaries that have been put upon them. You're taking away a lot of context. You keep thinking that what we had before was normal, but what we had before wasn't normal. What we currently have isn't normal. It's people trying to put people in boxes where they don't belong in boxes. So 
heteronormativity. That that's the social contagion. <laughs> if you want to talk about a social contagion, that's the one. There it is. That's that's what it is. So you just don't like the boxes being broken down. It makes you a bit scared. It makes you a bit uncomfortable. But you know what? Deal with it. <sighs> anyway, um, I've been sitting and talking for way longer than I thought I had been. Uh, so I'm going to end it here. I'm glad that I was finally able to talk about Ben Shapiro. It has been a long time coming. Um, so <laughs> I'm glad we got it out of the way. I hope that you enjoyed it. <laughs> A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. I appreciate all of your support so much. And a massive, massive thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Toulouse, Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Ida, Queer Corey, Raven, Danielle, Elias, Evie, Nix of the Eternal Night, Rin, Jewel, Sparrow, Apollo, Taylor is Trying, and Matto. I appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash SavvyCat or click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, and more. I appreciate it so much. Anything helps. Um, so thank you. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, The Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, That Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs>